it's May May, and if you have been following along this week, you will have been making circle punch art for Dad's or Father's Day. And today, we're doing a last minute card, doing the last two styles of circle punches I'm gonna bring to you for Father's Day. So today we're making a sport coat, which you can kind of see there, and we're also making this little bow tie and suspenders or as my grandpa would say, galluses. Did anybody else's grandfather call them galluses? I don't know, he did. Okay, so let's get started. The suspenders are so stinking easy. You're gonna love this. If you need to throw a card together today, this is it. Round circle, I'm using a one and three quarter inch circle punch. I'm gonna take a little bit of sticky tape and I'm gonna put some on the back, at the top and the bottom. I found this was the easiest way to do my suspenders. Even though I could do them with art glitter glue, this was just easier to me. I got a little bit hanging off the edge. I'm gonna trim that um, sticky off of there. You don't have to, you can just fold it under after you peel the backer off. But just for time's sake, I'm gonna do it that way. Now I'm going to reveal my sticky tape, just like so, okay? Top and bottom. Now you're gonna need two pieces of ribbon. I'm using this really thin, when I say thin, I should say uh, narrow um, ribbon, and it has little white polka dots on it, super cute. I buy this stuff at the end of the year at like Michael's and Hobby Lobby, etc. when it's like 90% off. I say it every time I do a video and that roll, I bought two of those and I'm still using that roll from two years ago. So it goes a long way. Now in classic May May style, there's a tip to make this work easier, okay? Because you're taking a straight line around a circle, you can't really just go stick, wrap and go because it'll be too loose. So what we're gonna do is where we want our suspender, we're going to place it into our sticky tape on an angle, all right? So, and I had to play with this a little bit to get this to work, so I've placed this on an angle. So when I wrap this around, I'm getting a smooth wrap here because of that angle. Then when I get to the bottom, I gotta do the same thing. I'm gonna angle it back into my sticky tape. So you see I have these two angles here, but what that does, it gives me a smooth wrap on either end, so I don't have any loose, flappy uh, ribbon there. So now I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. And we have to do that little angle. And the part that I struggled with the most was lining them up about the same. Um, so when I would turn this over, if they weren't the same, all you have to do, this ribbon will just come out. As long as you don't rub it into your sticky tape really, really smooth, you'll be all right. You can always uh, burnish it down after you're done. So see, you just move that and make them kind of match, just kind of eyeball. And then again, angle that into your sticky tape. And now we have two nicely laying, smooth little suspenders, okay? Now that we have those on, and I would put those on first. I think this makes this easier because if you don't get it perfectly centered, it's not that big of a deal if you do it that way. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little cutter B scissors and I'll make a slice just a scant quarter of an inch, just a quarter of an inch. I don't want a really super big collar on this one. Remember how we've made collars on all the other ones we've been doing? I don't want a super big collar. I just want a tiny collar just like that, okay? Then we're gonna make our bow tie. So easy. So for the bow tie, I'm using a one inch circle punch and just some paper. Let me flip this where I can see what I'm punching. And this is a little plaid paper. It's got a little floral on the back. This is so easy, all right? The reason I chose the one inch circle punch is I felt like it would work well with the one and three quarter inch. And I'm gonna use this whole width for my bow tie so I don't have to do any measuring. All right, I'm gonna fold this guy in half. I think I'll fold it this way. Most everything starts with folding in half on these. <laughs> and then using my scissors, I'm gonna come kind of to the, like a three eighths of an inch down from the top, something like that. Not the center, but a little above center and make a notch that is about a good eighth of an inch, okay? So I've come down about three inches and made a notch about an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Come down about three inches and make a notch. What this is creating is the middle of the tie or the knot of the tie. So we just make two little notches beside each other. I'll bring this up to the camera in just a second. Then I'm gonna flip this over. And at an angle, I'm gonna come out to one side and snip at an angle, okay, back to that little notch we made earlier. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna come out at an angle again and snip back to that little notch we made. I'm gonna bring this to camera and lay it so you can see the shape. It's almost like a megaphone, sort of. Kind of like a megaphone, but it's a little flat on one end, or it's a little 
you know, notched here, and then it goes out at an angle. So imagine a bow tie, half of a bow tie. Then when we open it up, we get the middle and the sides of our bow tie. It is perfect. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go back to our little shirt that we made. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I have already put the sticky tape on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little foam tape so I can set this on my work surface and not have any issues. So I'm just cutting a piece of, oops, Scotty off of there. <laughs> uh, for those of you who ask, I named my big roll of foam tape Scotty. That's why I say Scotty most of the time about that. Um, actually, a subscriber named her Scott, named him Scotty, I should say. All right, so here's this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and glue my bow tie in before I put my pearls on. Now, I chose pearls for buttons. You can use anything you want. That's like I said the other day when my husband was in the live show with us. You know, guys have mother of pearl buttons and shiny buttons on their shirt. It doesn't hurt a thing. So now I'm just going to glue the middle portion of this bow tie down. And I'm not gluing the outer edges. I'm just gluing that up into the center of my collar with the art glitter glue. I'm going to lay that down and press it because I can't quite get my fingers in there. And then I want the ends to be kind of loose so I can pop them up once I put them on the card. So there's that little bow tie. Now we just need our buttons. I'm using these pearls. We carry these in the store, and I really love these little tiny things. I use them like crazy. I need seven. One, let's see, let's start over here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to make a snip right after that seventh one, and then I'm going to pop this little guy off, and these guys come in a, in a little strand like that on the adhesive, and then all I have to do is lay it at the middle underneath my bow tie and make it nice and straight. Or, you know, as eyeballed straight as we can get it. Just like this. Perfect. And that is my little bow tie shirt. It's so stinking cute. There's the first one I did. I did it using the opposite side of this paper. And I want to show you something. I did not round the edges of this bow tie. I left them pointy. But on this one, I just took my scissors and knocked, notched that little point off. So if you want your bow tie to have a little round edge, you can. Love that one. Now let's do the one that I think was the biggest challenge for me. And that is the shirt and tie jacket. It really isn't hard to do, but I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do it, but I did, and it's super easy. This one starts with a shirt and tie, so how do we do it? Super easy. Here's what we do. One and three quarter inch circle. Let's make a collar. That's where we're going to start. So I put a little notch, fold this down. So that is my shirt, okay? Now, we've made, on Tuesday, I showed you how to make your tie template. We've already done that. So I'm going to use my same scrap of paper I've been using like crazy, and I'm going to trace this tie. Now, I don't need the whole tie because the bottom's not going to show, so I'm only going to trace the sides of it and the top because that's really all I need, and I don't have to worry about doing the bottom. So I'm going to cut this little tie out about like that. So just imagine a short tie. Snip that out, snip this out. You can, of course, cut this away and then trim it out perfect, but it's super easy to do. So that's my little tie piece, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and glue it into the shirt, just like so. Flip this around and stick this into the center of that collar. That is your tie, easy enough. Again, we're not worried about the bottom because it's not gonna show. Let me get that guy centered before my glue dries. Okay, so I'm going to show you just how I did this. You may find a different way. This is very eyeball-y, okay? I'm going to take my scissors and just at some point in the middle of this um, circle, I'm making a slice that goes almost all the way to the bottom, but not quite. I found this was the best way for me to get my angles kind of similar to each other. Then I'm taking a bone folder, okay? And for camera, this is going to be a little harder because I can do this easier facing myself, but here's what we're going to do. That bone folder has kind of a curve or an angle. I'm laying it where the top is further out and I'm bringing the edge to that middle slice that I made, okay? So I'm kind of leaving like an angle and all I'm trying to do is get a bend started. So I'm just starting to bend on that, um, on that bone folder. Then I'm gonna lay it down and I'm gonna fold this over and you'll see what I was doing when I get this folded over. Just kind of working it over and I can crease it now. So I've just made kind of this little angle fold. That's it, nothing fancy. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And this is why I thought it was cool to leave it put together. I could 
pretty much eyeball my angles and make sure they're pretty similar to each other. And now when I fold this over, I know that my jacket will kind of match, if that makes sense. I am going to cut it apart, but I felt this was a better way for me to do this. Okay, so now I've got my two little points. Now we can take this guy and finish the slice. So we have two jacket sides. But you're thinking, yeah, but that little piece doesn't look much, much like a jacket lapel. Well, we're gonna make it look like a jacket lapel. Watch this. Take your scissors and from the fold, we're gonna make a notch, okay? That makes our little lapel collar point. See that? Okay, we're gonna do the same thing here. Just from one edge, oops, I got sticky there. All right, just from one edge to the folded edge, to the folded spot that you just made, you're making that little angle cut, all right? Now, totally optional. You could leave it just like this and it looks like a jacket. But I thought, I'm just gonna see if I can do these little notches, and I did. Let me show you what I did. Again, I'm eyeballing. This is a fun one. This is last minute, okay? I made a little notch about a third of the way down from the top at an angle, just like a lapel, okay? Then from this point to that notch, we're gonna snip that out from here to here. Do you see that? It instantly makes a jacket lapel. It's so easy to do. Don't stress if they're not exactly the same, but if you do stress about that, line them up together, okay? My angles are pretty close, and you can make your notches right side by side and make sure your notches are the same. I did not stress about this. I just did the same thing on the other side, but if you need to match them, there you go. And now your little lapels will match. It's so cute. So stinging cute. I know my fingers are all in the way. These guys are small. See that one? And see that one? Oh, so cute. Now, back to our shirt and tie. What we're going to do is we're going to take this guy. Somehow I got a little fuzzy part there. Let me trim that off. Okay. We're going to take this guy and we're going to glue it down. But I want to do this before I glue it. I want to show you. You kind of want to line the jacket up with the edge of the shirt, overlapping slightly. If you don't, you end up with the jacket kind of floating in the air and it doesn't look as good. So I kind of angled it. And by doing that, it means your jacket's gonna overlap and that's fine because a jacket would if it was buttoned. It would totally overlap. So I'm just putting some glue on the back and I'm gonna come to that edge and kind of line that up. It doesn't have to be exactly on the edge of that collar. But I do want it to hang over the collar just a little bit because that's going to hold it down. And there is one side glued down. Now the other side. See how our tie's just hiding inside there? That's why you don't have to worry about the bottom at all. Then put this little guy on this side. Doing the same thing. My jacket's going to overlap. I'm going to slightly overlap the collar at the top. And then place that down. Now, I did not put a button on my first one, but I think I'm going to. I'm going to put a button down here using those same little pearls. Let's go back to those. I'm going to cut a couple and do that on both of these real quick. These are teeny, so I'm going to grab it with my pokey tool. And I think I'll just put it about mm, maybe here, maybe there. I don't know. It's a jacket. It's your jacket. You're, you're the fashion designer today on this one. Something like that, so it looks a little button. Maybe two buttons. Suits have two buttons. One a little higher. Yeah, that's cute. Two looks good. So there's our little suit jackets. I think they're super cute and you get to be the fashion designer. But now, what you've been waiting for all week, I hope, is I'm gonna put them on a card. I've been assembling and assembling to put these guys on a card. So what I'm gonna do is mix these guys up. I have my vest with the tie, I have my suit jacket with the tie, and I have my little suspenders. Those are gonna go on a card, so let's do that real quick. Now I'm gonna assemble this guy. I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half card um, base that is already folded, okay? I'm not doing any stamping today. This is a last minute card. You're running out the door, okay? So today you're spending your time on the decorations and you're gonna hand write. Dads will like handwriting, trust me. So here's the card base. Then I've cut three pieces of cardstock. This little striped piece is four by five and a quarter. This is gonna be the base or the mat that goes on my card base. This little piece is two and three eighths. 
and this piece is two and one eighths. I wanted an eighth of an inch on either side, so I've got a white trim piece that's gonna pop out that's gonna lay here. Anytime, in my opinion, anytime you're doing like writing or a pattern on one page and a pattern on another, it's good to have a solid to break that up for the eye so you can really see the patterns. Otherwise, they just kind of blend together. So that's that, and then these guys, our little shirts, are going to go on here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is pop these up on foam, and I'm going to place them. This is before I've peeled the backer off. I want to place them and see how I want them. I think I want the browns or the heavier browns to be at the top and the bottom. And these guys are just going to fit on this strip. So you're not going to have a whole lot of room in between them. But look how cute they are on there. I think they're adorable. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put this one down at the top first. I'm just going to peel the backer off of that foam now that I've kind of eyeball placed everything. Get you stuck down just like so. Then the next one. Now I know tomorrow's Father's Day and you're thinking, May May, you should have brought these to me so much sooner, but here's the deal. We always need masculine cards. This is not just for Father's Day. This card can be for a birthday, an anniversary, a retirement party. Can you imagine if dad wore a shirt and tie every day for all the years of his work and now he's retiring and doesn't have to do it anymore? You could do hang them up, dad. That'll be so cute. So don't think this is just for Father's Day. This is super cute for all of your masculine cards. Now I'm gonna glue this straight down to that white strip that we just looked at a second ago. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what paper pack I'm using, for the majority of this card, I'm using the um, Photo Play Red, White, and Blue pack. Surprisingly, I think the papers in there are very masculine and very gorgeous, including this one with the handwriting that I just put the little shirts on. It's actually from the page that has the Constitution on it. It's actually kind of cool. Um, so that's the handwriting page. And then this is actually from that pack too. So just because something is, you know, slated for something else, be it the 4th of July pack or a patriotic or even spring or summer or winter or fall, you can still find papers in your packs that work for other seasons or other events. So this is going to be one of my Father's Day cards. Isn't that cute? Okay, I'm gonna glue this to here. And like I told you, use your handwriting. Don't be afraid to write inside the card. If you've got stamps and you've got time, stamp in there, go for it. I love stamping as much as the next guy, but this is a last minute card. So I spent time on the front of this one so that when I give this to dad, he's gonna be like, oh my gosh, you made this, that's so cool but then you are gonna have your handwriting inside or stamped, whatever you had time to do, for dad. Look how cute that card is. That's really adorable, I have to be honest. So there it is, a Father's Day card with punch art. I love it, I think it's so fun. I love to do punch art and I think, I don't know which is my favorite. This is very Vinny to me. He, this is very much his style of dress. Every Sunday, he's typically in a shirt and tie. He's not so much on suspenders, although I have seen him in suspenders, but this is a cute one, and I think he'll enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you make this, or if you do punch art, oops, I just slung it out of the way. If you do punch art like this, I wanna see it. I really do. I love to see what you guys are doing. So head to our customer gallery on our website, the menu bar has the word more, hover over more, you'll see the customer gallery drop down. Add your stuff there. The reason I encourage you to add to the customer gallery is because no one has to have any special social media for that. They can just come to our website and see it. But if you'd like to share on social media, check out our Facebook page or our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. Also, tag us on social media on Instagram or Twitter or anywhere you do social media so I can see it. Thanks so much, guys. Have a wonderful Father's Day, and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.